Right lads, welcome back to my team career mode. If my voice sounds a bit gone, I've just recorded my team Monza and driver career Abu Dhabi back to back and now I'm doing this one. I definitely don't recommend doing three commentaries in a row, yet here I am, always ignoring my own advice. Um, but anyway, if you haven't seen Monza, go check it out. Um, it was a bit of a mad one as Monza, well I say mad one, um, it was just action all the way as Monza tends to be on these games. It can be a bit boring sometimes in real life, but on the game, it's always so much battles. Why can't we have battles like that at Monza in real life? Lap after lap after lap battles. They never stop at Monza on this game. Never. And yet, they do in real life. Uh, but anyway, we're just seeing the standings there. Leclerc retook the lead of the championship last time out by one point to Norris. We're, a few, we're about 13 points behind Norris. 14 behind Leclerc. It's ever close as per usual in this season. You know, no one's had a gap of more than 30 points in the lead. And that was Leclerc earlier in the season when he kind of ran away a little bit at the beginning. But then myself and Lando reeled him back in. And um, McLaren still have Ferrari, you know, reeled in. Ferrari got back past him. They were four points behind. They're now 14 points ahead of McLaren. And we're still about the same kind of gap behind them. We're just comfortable in P3. We're comfortable. At the moment, keeping P3 is kind of the best we can do. Um, you know, unless we start getting some one twos, then P3 is probably the, the best we're going to do, which is a really good result in the constructors from the P going from what, P6 last season to P3 this season. Um, pretty good end result it would be, um, but with about, with about, you know, about 2,200 points to play with. And with what, about, what's that, about seven upgrades left on the aero side of things? Um, as I said, we're still just waiting for a couple on the, to unlock on the power side of things. Uh, we're not too far away from being maxed out, I'm gonna be perfectly honest with that one. Still just playing around with the idea of more durability upgrades. It's something I would need to do. We're actually spending R&D on durability. For once. It's a rare thing for me to spend R&D points on durability. It is a very rare thing. But it's something I need to do because my durability department is just... Just picture some, like, loose spare tires just lying around in an abandoned warehouse. That's my durability department. That's my durability department, honestly. As uh, so we have a marketing department event asking us who we want our rival to be. Who our rival is. I suppose it makes sense to choose the one out of these two who are fighting in the championship. It's Leclerc. Um, one of our rivals. Norris, the other one. As um, We've had a couple of R&D points coming in. And an upgrade coming in on the chassis side of things there. So that's unlocked a couple more upgrades. Still just waiting for upgrades to come in on the durability side of things. Um, so we can't really do anything more there. But we could do something on the um, on the downforce there. Again, just waiting for more upgrades. It could have been good if we could have done that 400 points upgrade for whichever one it was there. As um, we've just got a small development update there. Um, in the messages, uh, but it's a big gap between Monza and Singapore. It's a three-week gap between Monza and Singapore. Of course, there was meant to be, um, there was meant to be Sochi in that gap. It was meant to be, there was meant to be Sochi ahead of Singapore and Japan, but then Sochi got binned because of freaking Russia and the whole Russia-Ukraine thing. Um, but we can now head towards the weekend. We've gotten some word about the regulations. There is going to be a change affecting multiple departments. We'll have to wait and see in the next couple of races which departments those are. And then we'll see what we'll have to do. So this is the sign to now start saving R&D points. This is the sign we need. We get this email, start saving points. Um, for the R&D point chart, for the, you know, reset and the winter, a lot of big upgrades from ourselves and McLaren finally bringing upgrades again as they had a few races off of bringing upgrades. Ferrari, Alfa Tauri and Alpine and Renault also bringing upgrades. Mercedes and Red Bull with some smaller upgrades. Everyone's got upgrades. Everyone's brought upgrades this weekend. Absolutely everyone. Haas getting ahead of Sauber, closing up to Williams, Aston Martin, closing up to Sauber as well. Um, and it's still ever close. Uh, but as we've seen time and again, what the R&D chart says and what happens are two completely different things. 
Air Dirt 2 completely everything. It doesn't matter what the R&D chart says, that might be complete and utter bullshit, as we've discovered. I mean, for how long this se how long this season was Red Bull the top of the R&D chart, and how many times this season were they not top on the track? They could never translate that. I don't know what it's been with Red Bull this season. They've just not been able to translate. Um, Verstappen's results this season. P5, P7, P9, P8, P9, P12 with fastest lap. P12, P1 from Paul. P10 with fastest lap. P6, DNF with but th but third in the sprint race. DNF, P3, P2 with fastest lap. DNF uh, from Paul. And then P16 with fastest lap. And then as uh, for as we go P14 there after our first run of qualifying here in Singapore, we're gonna have to go again on that one as we have a dodgy first corner. Uh, but the Vettel P9, P4, DNF, P11, P16, P11, P10, P2, P5, P14, P2 with P8 in the sprint race, P10, P12, P5, P3, P5. Big their pace, their R&D chart of their car is suggested top of the field, but their pace is suggested midfield, which is where they are. I, I just don't know what's happened to If anybody can come up with any explanation for what the hell has happened to Red Bull this season, please feel free to give your suggestions in the comments. I don't know, maybe, maybe it's the cost cap. You know, maybe, may I just thought of this. I just thought of this. I'll talk about this in Q2. Lando Norris quickest from Sergio Perez. We end the session in, in uh, ninth place. All surprises out in Q1. Um, but maybe this is to do with them going over budget in 2021, right? Because we all know the punishment they got um, for like, reduced time in the wind tunnel or something to do with CFD or whatever it is. As we get our first lap or used tire run out of the way. Um, but, um, I'll continue that train of thought in a second. Ricardo from Perez, Leclerc Verstappen, Alonso Hamilton, Alcon, Albon with another brilliant lap, Norris in ninth. Sainz, not a brilliant lap from him, we're down in P16 at the moment. Uh, Lando Norris gonna need a good lap to get out of Q2. Um, and as are we, I'm gonna be probably honest, and as is Sainz. Um, but we all know the punishment Red Bull got in real life for going over the budget cap in 2021. Maybe that's crossed over into the game. And for going over budget in 2021, they have actually been punished a bit here in the game's kind of coding or something like that as well. I don't know. That's just me trying to come up with something as we've had a little bit of, um, timing tower screw aroundery. That's, that, that's a new one. Screw, screw That's a new one. Screw aroundery. Jesus Christ, the things my brain comes up with when I'm commentating. I, I had one on the last game. What was it? In season 7, I believe it was. Or it was season 7 or season 6. And I was at Austria, and then I wanted to say that McLaren extended his gap at the top of the championship, but I couldn't think of the word. But extended. So instead I said, embiggenated the gap. Because, I don't know. I, I think I must have been thinking about that one Markiplier video where he was playing The Sims 4. He was making, I believe, he was making himself um, Bob and Wade, and then he was talking about something to do with embiggenating something. To, I think it was a nose he was trying to embiggenate. And he said, I don't know, we're making it embiggenated. If you've seen the vi if you've watched Markiplier and have seen that Sims 4 video I'm on about from like 20. 15 I think it was Then you'll know what I'm on about but for those of you who don't watch Markiplier You're probably sitting there thinking what the fuck is she talking about? Just if you watch Markiplier, what I've said probably makes some form of sense, but my whole tangent about um, Me screwing up the English language aside we've just gone. I believe that was P7 I've done nothing but talk shit this entire qualifying session. And at the expense of George Russell and Carlos Sainz as well. Sebastian Vettel just scraping through Esteban Ocon with that invalid lap time. But George Russell and Carlos Sainz both out in Q2. That's big for Ferrari. That is big for Ferrari. Daniel Ricciardo ends up quickest. Both McLarens in the top 10 for the start of the race, providing no one has penalty. This is a new set of tyres for this first run, actually. Not used like it normally is. It is new tires for once for the first run because I had a new set of tires and I do not intend on starting this race on soft tires. 
as Vettel did a 36-9 for the first lap. Whereas we're focusing on the qualifying session, not whatever bullshit ramblings I'm talking about. Hamilton goes a couple tenths quicker than his former championship rival. We drop a 37-3 for our first lap. Perez was behind us and he does a 35-8 from our teammate. What a lap! Norris is alongside him with just ahead of Leclerc, Hamilton, Gasly with a terrific lap time in P5. Vettel, Alonso, Verstappen, Ricardo. If Gasly could start P5 or spread about there, that would be huge for his championship. That would be huge for him. Because AlphaTauri have not had a very good season thus far. You know, Gasly has, what, a couple of three p 8 2 P9s and 2 P10 so far. That would be huge for him. As we're, we were off the track a little bit there the first corner, but no harm, no foul, no warning. Uh, we're 2 tenths up on the run out of turn 3 and 4. And we now chuck it through turn number 5 and open up the DRS here on the back, on the uh, Raffles Boulevard. And we'll make the run down into turn 7 where Max is stopping, I believe, at a horrible lock up in real life. We've gone purple. We're four and a half tenths up on Sebastian Vettel, four tenths up on our previous best. As we head through one of my favorite overtaking spots on this entire racetrack. Turn 8 is so good for overtaking. What, what can I say? I don't know, what's your favorite overtaking spot in Singapore? Comment below. Um, but we make the run down through the old Singapore sling. Ricardo has gone sixth quickest. Um, and then we're going to be swinging it on now over the Anderson Bridge and into the hairpin. Um, we're nine tenths up on our previous best effort. We'll see the second sector split in a moment at the end of this long straight. Here it is. We're almost a second up on Daniel Ricardo's time. This is a brilliant lap time. I don't, I can't remember exactly how much we were down on our teammate after the first run. Um, we were over a second, I know that much. I believe. Um, but we're on a brilliant lap at the moment. We're over a second up now as we head on through the final couple of corners here. Um, through the left hand, and then there's a two more corners left to go. This is going to be close on the line with our teammate. Around the final corner. We open the DRS, cross the line. Will we get it? I think we maybe just missed it. And it's P2 again. Um, 17 milliseconds is all that was in it. Very close, but Sergio Perez gets pole position. We lock out the front row for the first time in this career mode. We could be on for a very good race tomorrow. A very good result for the team. Can Sergio Perez translate his first pole position for our team into a first win for our team? A second win. No, not second win. I don't know how many races Perez won last season, but I know he's not won a race this season. In fact, he's only had one podium this season. That was in Paul Ricard. Uh, but we're ahead of Lando Norris and Charles Leclerc on the second row of the grid. Lewis Hamilton alongside Pierre Gasly. Brilliant qualifying from him. Then comes Daniel Ricciardo, Sebastian Vettel, Fernando Alonso and Max Verstappen rounding out the grid. Rounding out the top ten. And not crap qualifying from Red Bull. Like I was saying, Red Bull. They're there or they're not, but they're just in the midfield half side. But we have locked out the front row. Let's see what we can do from there. Against the spectacular backdrop of the Singapore skyline, Formula One returns once again to do battle in what tends to become something of an endurance race, with the notorious sauna-like temperatures in the cockpit making for an extremely physically challenging race. The Marina Bay Street Circuit then has 23 corners, 13 to the left and 10 to the right, taking us a total of 3.1 miles around the landmarks of downtown Singapore. An average lap speed around here, just 107 miles per hour. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. It's Sergio Perez on pole today and the owner driver alongside. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Norris, Leclerc, and Sir Lewis Hamilton, and Gasly. Ricardo, Vettel, Fernando Alonso, and Max Verstappen. Russell, Albon, Carlos Sainz, and Joe. Mick Schumacher, Ocon, Yuki Tsunoda, and Lance Stroll. Magnussen, Armstrong, Oscar Piastri, and Nicholas Latifi. It's almost time for the lights to go out, so let's head down to the track where preparations are underway. 
Natalie Pinkham joins me once again in the commentary box. It's fantastic to have you with us today. I'm curious, though, how do you think the drivers stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming when you're lining up on the grid? Well, I imagine they'll be starting to feel the adrenaline as they anticipate the rundown into turn one, a bit like preparing to go into battle. The unknown situation will bring nerves, but that's a good thing. It'll keep them focused on the moment and on their surroundings as we build towards the start of the Grand Prix. Nope, Jeff Ensign, Jack shit. Okay, gonna be a medium hard one stop for us today, as it is a typical Singapore strategy. Tends to be one stops on this game. I'm not entirely convinced getting rid of the Q2 tire rule was a good thing for the game. In real life, I really don't give two shits. So I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you on that one. Me, salt tires for Carlos Sainz. That's dodgy, but I mean, hey, he's starting further down the field. They've gotta try something. Marcus Armstrong also on the soft tires. You'd expect that. Just take the gamble. We're already down here. Let's see if we can gain some places. Um, but Carlos Sainz, another one that's... He's kind of just not been there the last few races. I'm going to be honest. Um, he's what? He was on the pole. He had three podiums in a row. And then he's been P4, P6, P7, P6, P8, P6, P4. He hasn't really been there the last few races, I'm going to be honest. He's only had four podiums this entire season. It's not been a good season from Carlos Sainz. I'll say that now. It's not been a good season from Carlos Sainz. A uh, bit underwhelming from the Spaniard. Um, if we can try and nail the parking once again, we absolutely okay, nail it. Uh, we'll see about that. The rest of the grid is forming up. Be patient and watch for the lights. Yep, I know, Jeff. Cheers for that one. Uh, but just as soon as Nicholas Latifi gets his horse parked up, he's taking forever to park up. Could Latifi take any? Could Latifi have taken any longer to park up? I don't know. But five lights on ahead of us here on the streets of Singapore. They're out, and we are racing in Singapore. It's a brilliant start from our teammates. A decent start from us. But Lando Norris and Charles Leclerc right with us. We're four wide into the first corner. My God, Leclerc, Norris ourselves, Hamilton, Leclerc, Norris, Hamilton, still three wide behind us. Um, that's Pierre Gasling fighting it out with Daniel Ricciardo behind Hamilton. Is through. He's had a brilliant start. Norris and Leclerc side by side behind these guys as they head on to Raffles Boulevard. We're comfortably in second place. Leclerc is trying to stay in fourth place. Where well, he's trying to be in fourth place. Gasly's ahead of Ricciardo. Norris is still trying to get ahead of Leclerc, but he's not quite been able to do so. At this present moment in time. And Norris is still fighting him out on this one. As they head through turn number nine. Now they're losing touch a little bit. With the Mercedes ahead. As, as Lando Norris gets that place. And is in fourth place. Schumacher. Is, I thought I saw someone who was about to go up the inside of someone there. Uh, but I don't know. They've all sorted themselves out here. Uh, but it is Sergio Perez leading the way then. Marcel's in second place. Still a 1-2 for us. As Lewis Hamilton, Lando Norris is ahead of Charles Leclerc. Pierre Gasly is in six. Brilliant start from him. The hold on to his place. Daniel Ricciardo, Fernando Alonso, Sebastian Vettel, Carlos Sainz rounding with the top ten. The soft is working from so far. Lewis Hamilton but a brilliant start. We were four wide heading into turn one. Hamilton and Leclerc got brilliant starts. And we pulled ahead... And then Hamilton just had the brilliant run through turn three. Norris got a little bit pinned in between. There was a bit of contact made and Hamilton just had the good line. And then these two were just side by side through turn number two. And Leclerc, he had about half a car length in front and then it all sorted itself out. And I said it looked like someone was up the inside of someone. It was Ricardo having a look up the inside of Pierre Gasly, the old Singapore slip. That's not normally a place where you go for a move, but I applaud the effort all the same. Back with ourselves on lap number three, and um, Sergio Perez has pulled it up here a bit. Check was pulled away in first place. He's gunning for that first win, and I tell you what, this would be a brilliant result for us and for the championship. It'll be a one-two for us, and it would also pull us a lot closer to Leclerc and Norris. Leclerc would retake the lead. Uh, Norris would retake the lead if it finished like this. Uh, but meanwhile, Carlos Sainz, he's kind of stalled out a little bit. Um, his tires will be uh, screaming by now, probably. They won't be in the best shape in the world. Um, but Sergio Perez still comfortable in front, two and a half seconds ahead of us. 
And we're still just, a, uh, we're floating around about a second ahead of Landon, of uh, Lewis Hamilton. Pardon me. And we've got Norris, Leclerc, Gasly, Ricardo, Alonso, Vettel. Um, then sorry, so nothing much has changed at this present moment in time. It's all just a bit, a bit of stalemate at the moment. We've pulled out by over a second ahead of Hamilton though. So we've broken the DRS, which is very good. Now we just need to make sure it stays broken. As there is Carlos Sainz finally retiring those soft compound tires. He'll be going on to probably a set of the mediums, I'd imagine, for the second stint in this Grand Prix. I'd imagine that's what he's going to be doing. And uh, yep, it's a set of the medium tires for the Ferrari. A yellow banded set of mediums for the, for the Ferrari car with the yellow outline on the number, on the wheel fairings, um, or whatever you want to call them. And on the T cam as well. It's nice touches that Ferrari added actually. With the t that's the one thing I really liked about the 2022 cars. That is a slow moving McLaren. That is a McLaren with an engine failure. And that is going to be delight to the, to the eyes and ears of Ferrari. Because uh, Perez, why are you pitting? Uh, why is Checo in? Why is Checo in the pit lane? Uh, we take the lead of the race. But why is Checo in the pit lane? What? I I'm confused. Has he got damage? There's no way he has wing damage. He wasn't freaking racing anybody. Why? What is he doing? Sergio Perez, what are you do What are my team doing? What are my team doing? Who hired the Ferrari strategists? Who hired Ferrari? It wasn't me. I did not hire the Fer I said I wanted to use a Ferrari power unit. Not the Ferrari strategy team. Oh my god. This could have been the easiest one-two of our lives. This could have been the easiest one-two of the entire game. But we've had a chance at. But now, no. Sir, because our strategy team have just thrown Chekhov's win down the drain. Chekhov's chance at the win, rather, down the drain. Oh my fucking god. Why? I, I'm lost for- I'm lost for words. I'm lost for words. Well and truly. Absolute fucking idiots, honestly. Uh, but he's quick on the back of Sonoda though. And he's gonna try and make the best of this. So good for him. He's up the inside of the Japanese driver. He's trying to get that place. But Sonoda is gonna fight this one out. And he's not, he's, Sonoda is still there as I thought Paris maybe had it done, he doesn't have it done. He's still trying to get the move finished off, he's got it finished off now. And he can set his sights on his former teammate Esban Ocon. These two had some um, collisions and issues when they were teammates. They in fact had one collision here at Singapore I believe maybe. Or no, I know Ocon was definitely once out on the opening lap in 2018 I think that was. But I don't know if that was at the hand of Perez or not. It might have been. I can't remember. It's been a while since I watched the 2018 Singapore Grand Prix. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you on that one. Uh, but he's now quick on the back of Mick Schumacher. He's trying to make the best of his strategy. But it's just not going to work. I just know it's not going to work. Schumacher going defensive there. Kind of, he was pushing Perez to the inside wall like his father did to um, Rubens Barrichello, I believe it was, in Hungary in 2010. But not quite as much to the inside wall as that is Carlos Sainz also trying to make the best of his strategy in trying to get past Oscar Piastri. Perez hasn't quite gone past Schumacher yet. Um, as Sainz has gotten Armstrong, Perez is going to get Schumacher here though. He's switching it to the outside line now. As they head through turn seven, bit of contact made, but Perez has got the move done. And that is Sainz now taking Piastri as well. He's passed both Sauber's and is up into 18th place. Trying to make the best of his strategy while we dive it in for the pit lane. Hamilton falls us in. Norris is going to go one lap longer. Um, Leclerc's in. This is the most awkward pit entry in the entire game, I swear. Hard tires coming out to the Mercedes garage. It's going to be hard tires coming out for everybody. Leclerc into the box. Um, gets his tire change. Bit of a steady pit stop there. Um, we get our tires changed onto the hard tires. We're back out. Still ahead of Hamilton. As um, I believe there's an Alpha Tires has been passed by an Al by a Renault in the pit lane. We're gonna rejoin behind Perez. Um, ignore that. 
ignore that Hamilton coming out of the pit lane. Um, Leclerc coming out of the pit lane. He'd love to be ahead of his teammates, and he's just ahead of his teammate. That is important for Ferrari's race. Um, as Hamilton could not be ahead of Yuki Tsunoda, he's behind him. It's important for Ferrari. Uh, Mercedes would have loved for Hamilton to be ahead of Tsunoda, but he's not. But Ferrari will be rather happy, and specifically Leclerc's side of the garage will be happy that he managed to get out ahead of Carlos Sainz. So that's big for Leclerc's race that he was able to be ahead of Sainz. Uh, but I think it is important for Hamilton that he got ahead of Kevin Magnussen. Um, we're comfortable from those guys, though. Um, I feel like we could be gaining quite a bit of time over Hamilton in this phase right now, where he's stuck behind the back markers. I'd say back markers, the traffic that hasn't stopped it. Schumacher, Ocon, Sonoda are all in between us and Lewis Hamilton. It looks like Sonoda, if you look at the minimum, it looks like he's backed up a little bit. Um, and so it looks like we're opening up a bit more of a gap to Hamilton. This is really good for us. We just need to be pushing on on this in lap, have a good in lap, and then we can maybe be a bit comfortable on going after our seventh race win. Honestly, we were in this race. It could be big for the champ for the championship. Close things right up. Uh, but Lando Norris is in the pit lane as is Sebastian Vettel. George Russell will be as well. They'll all be going on with the hard compound tires. Um, Vettel gets his tires changed. Ha um, Norris that is changed. There's Russell as well. And um, we'll see where Lando Norris comes out of the pit lane. Perez will retake the lead of the race, but he has to stop again. So we'll be in the net race lead. Or we should be. There's Lando Norris. We're comfortably clear of the McLaren. Who is comfortably clear of the Mercedes. That hurt Hamilton. As um, that's uh, Savetel rejoining behind Pierre Gasly, Russell rejoining in 11th place, Albon in 12th. Um, the, the gap is three seconds. We gained a lot in this pit stop period for once, but Sergio Perez leads, but he has to stop again. So we're in the net race lead. The Norris is second, Hamilton is third, then it's Leclerc fourth, and and I was gonna say side and fifth, but he has to stop again as well. So it's Alonso in fifth, then comes Gasly in sixth. Then Vettel and Verstappen in 8th uh, place, Russell in ninth, and Alex Albon round up the top 10 provisionally as things stand at this present moment in time. The gap has closed down a little bit. Um, yeah, Jeff, I know, I know. Lando Norris has gained by a couple of tenths, I know. Lord me, Jesus. Although Hamilton really got held up there in the pit phase. I didn't realize how much Hamilton got held up there until like just this second. I was just thinking Hamilton really got held up there. Because Norris managed to overcut him. Norris was behind him. Now he's ahead of him. The gap is sizable, you know? He's got a bit of work to do if he wants to try and get back on the po back into second, to fighting for second in this race. He has to try and close up to Lionel Norris, who we know is no slouch behind the wheel. And we've gone purple in the first sector. Um, we've pulled out a couple of tents on Norris on this lap again. So we're, this is kind of an attempt for a fastest lap. I can't say I'm not trying to set fastest lap. But I, because I am trying to set fastest lap. Um, you know, why just try and go for it. Try and get the extra point. It would be nice to have the extra point. Every point counts. Uh, we've had a green middle sector. It's a personal best. Not a best overall, but a personal best. So that's still good. Uh, Norris must have had a better middle sector than us. Because uh, the gap was about three, 2.93 seconds at the beginning of sector 2. Now it's closed down quite a bit more. There's a few corners left and we'll see um, if this is going to be just a personal best lap time or if it will be the fastest lap of the race so far. I don't know what the fastest lap of the race is so far. Um, but we'll be about to find out surely whether this is going to be enough or not. Uh, for cross line, it is enough. It's a 39.9 for us. For a fastest lap of the Grand Prix, a purple green purple lap. It's good enough. It's good enough. And we're still information on Norris. If they have an issue with their car, they're going to be slow. Comfortable ahead and Norris. We're gonna be even more comfortable now. That is huge. That could be huge for the championship. It's huge for this race. Lionel Norris, after seeing his teammate retire with a mechanical failure as Carlos Sainz dives it into the pit lane. Lando Norris now has a problem with his car. That's huge for this race. Lando Norris going to be in a bit of trouble here. I'm sure he was hoping to maybe retake the lead of the championship tonight. That might not happen. 
Because he's got a problem. He's dropping away from us. You can see on the timing tower, Lewis Hamilton is closing in. Uh, Leclerc is right behind Hamilton. As uh, we'll see where science comes out of the pit lane. Armstrong in, uh, is um, in the pit lane as well. But we're going to be comfortable in the lead of the race. Lando Norris to be closed on by Lewis Hamilton. He's closing on his fellow Brit. And look, you know, right behind him, Leclerc right behind that Alonso as well. They're all stacking up behind to try and get past Norris. This could be dumb. This is going to be a domino effect for Lando Norris. This is big for the championship. Dep and it could be huge depending on how far Norris falls. Hamilton going to the inside to go for the move on Lando Norris. And we go to the deep. Hamilton's going through. Leclerc's going through. Fernando Alonso's trying to follow them. To tr Norris could be able to lose three places in the matter of corners. No, he's not. He holds on ahead of, Nor of, of Alonso for the time being. But Hamilton and Leclerc both swept on through. And now uh, with Hamilton once again not having DRS, Leclerc can try to continue his charge to try and get past Hamilton. Um, as he's been trying to since he got came out the pit lane, Alonso on the inside of Norris. That's a beautiful move from from Fernando Alonso, who's up in the fifth place, which will become fourth. Sainz battling it out with Sonoda there, not quite able to make the move. He's um still down in P16. It's not quite working out for Carlos Sainz today. Not quite working out for him. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you on that one. The soft strategy just has not worked, but mind you, the medium strategy probably wouldn't have worked either. Because it's the AI we're talking about, and they don't always know how to overtake, but science definitely does at that point in time. Because he's up in the P15 Perez, back into the pit lane now as well. Uh, for his second stop of, of, of this race, I, I can't get over his strategy, man. This could have been an easy one too! This could have been an easy one too, and we could have been gaining a lot of points on McLaren and Ferrari. But with half of their teams having absolute nightmares, which is what my strategy team is having. Uh, seriously, is it possible to fire the strategy team? We'll see if he's parked up there at the side. Is it possible to fire the strategy team in this game? Because if it is, then I want to do that. But we're comfortable in the lead. As Perez has exited the pit lane in P11. As things stand at this moment, he's just behind Alex Albon by about a second. As Lando Norris has found himself under pressure from Pierre Gasly, who's right on his still, he's looking for the move. He's not quite able to go for it, but he was looking for the move. He's definitely putting Norris under some pressure, and he could be going for the move into turn one. He's definitely going to go for the move. Or to me, into turn one, the two Red Bulls are behind him, as is George Russell. Gasly trying to get that move done, but Norris is going to fight this one out. He may have a slow car, but he's gonna go. He's not gonna go down without a fight. He'll go down fighting to the end, uh, because after all, this is champ. This is a champ championship points at stake. He's been passed by the Alpha Terry. He could be about to be passed by a Red Bull as well. If the Red Bull's close enough, I don't think it is. In fact, I think Vettel's closer to Verstappen. Then Verstappen is to Norris, and no moves can be made further on that straight. But the Red Bulls are gonna be all over him on the back on, when we get round to the main straight. They are all over him. Gasly's checked out the thick end two seconds ahead of him. And Verstappen's almost pushing him round these final couple of corners. And he's going to be past him into turn one. For damn sure he's going to be past him. And I'm sure Vettel will be trying to come past as well. But side by side, Vettel stacking up behind. Russell is right behind these guys as well in the Mercedes. Surely Verstappen is going to try and overtake in a way that allows his teammates to swoop on through as well so they can continue their charge after Pierre Gasly to try and get past him. Because at the moment, Pierre Gasly is the leading Red Bull car of the four. If I'm being perfectly honest, he's had a brilliant race. Verstappen's got the moves on. Neat move from him. And there is Sergio Perez trying to make a move on Alex Albon. There's contact. Uh, that was a robust move, but it's a move done nonetheless by Sergio Perez. He's back up into the point paying positions of P10. Um, meanwhile, Carlos Sainz under pressure from Esteban Ocon further in the field. That's not ideal for Sainz. Lock up from the Spaniard. That did not work out at all for him as Vettel's not very patient. Vettel didn't even want to wait for the main story. He was going for it through the last couple of corners. It was a brilliant move from the German. Nonetheless, as Russell now goes on by his um, good friend Lando Norris and now Sergio Perez is right in the background trying to get involved. Lando Norris could fall out the points here. And if that happens, it's going to be big for the championship. Lando Norris could go 
from being, what, one point behind in the championship to several points back. Lando Norris could drop the third in the standings as Sergio Perez down the inside has got the move done. And now Alex Albon is all this, all the stands between Lando Norris are falling out the points as Alex Albon behind it. And Alex Albon is right on the back of his friend, these two debuted in 2019. Where the hell is Albon going? Where the hell was he going? I, I don't know where Albon was going there, but he wasn't going after a move on Lando. I know and tell you that much right now. Uh, either way, he's going to have to wait for the, for the Raffles Boulevard to go for a move there. I can tell you that one. Providing he's close enough. I don't think he's close enough, actually. He is close. But I just don't think he'll be close enough. He's looking for the move on the outside. Not quite able to go for it. As uh, Science has gotten the move done on Espen Orkin. He's back ahead of him into P14. This was our one. Um, what happened here? I just got a little bit twitchy on the run through the final corner. And this was Science making the move on Espen Orkin. He decided to go the long way around the Frenchman at the first three corners. And it ended up in, in Science getting the move done and getting up into 14th place. Meanwhile, it's gonna be second time lucky, I think, for Alex Albon. He's gaining on Norris and squeezing him to the inside. Albon up the inside of the first corner. And Norris is still there. He's still just ahead of me, still holding on ahead of the um, Williams car. As he's gonna fight for this one for all he can. He's gonna fight this one out. Because this is championship we're talking about here. You know, he's about to fall out of the points if Albon can get this move done. Then the Lando Norris will fall out of the points. Alex Albon on the outside gets the move done. Lando Norris cannot fight it out. He is now out the points while Alex Albon is back up into 10th place in this race. And can I just say, um, further up the field, we've not really seen the front of the field for a while. But I can almost guarantee you that after this race, Leclerc is going to be able to draw the back end of that Mercedes car from memory. He's been staring at the back of that car for so long. And all I can think about now is that one time in Top Gear when Daniel Ricciardo was on the show. Then Clarkson asked, oh, does anyone have a question for him? Then, he, then someone looked, what does the back of Lewis's car look like? Then he just stuck the middle finger up. Fuck, I need to do it. I need to do an edit of that. Just put Leclerc's face over it. Because it fits so well. It fits so well, honestly. But he's close to Hamilton. He is close and it'll help his championship if he can get past Hamilton. Uh, but I don't know if he'll be able to. And I'll have to find, wait and see if he can do it. I think he's a bit too far back to go for it down at Raffles Boulevard. He is too far back. Four and a half tenths right now to go for the kicker turn six. Yeah, he's not close enough to go for the move. We'll have to wait and see if they'll be close enough come the end of the race. He could do with that, so he been a couple hundred meters longer. But on, to the, on the final lap through closing corners, uh, you can see Hamilton is still ahead of Leclerc. Leclerc is still staring at the back of that Mercedes car, probably a bit frustrated by now, but it's been plain sailing for, for us ever since our team deployed whatever the fuck that strategy was for Perez. Seriously, what was the strategy team doing? I don't know. But for us, it's going to be a seventh win of the season when the fireworks are flying. We win the Singapore Grand Prix. Aye, aye, aye. Awesome. Just amazing. Well done. Thank you, Jeff. That's probably my favorite win of the season. I'm going to be perfectly honest. More than Monaco. I love Singapore, though. I love Singapore. I love it as um, Leclerc ends up in third. Probably a little bit frustrated behind Hamilton in second place. Who gets driver of the day as well? To be fair, he did have a brilliant start, to be fair. What a great race it's been then. Another classic Singapore Grand Prix. And they've held on to take the chequered flag here today. Natalie Pinkham, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? Well, tyre management probably played quite a large role in the outcome of this one. As ever, it's not just about speed, it's about maintaining that speed consistently over a stint, over a race distance. So, being able to keep up the lap times while still being smooth on the controls, gentle on the tyres, that's where the race was won today. Well, 
I'm thoroughly exhausted after the excitement of that race, but I'm sure it's nothing compared to our drivers here. They've worked hard to make it up there, and it's great to see them make their way onto the podium now. Well, what's this gonna do to the championship, I wonder? The Lando Norris are falling out of the points, Leclerc and third ourselves winning. This is gonna shake it up a treat with just five races to go in this season. This is the point of the season where a result like what Norris had today could prove crucial come the final race. Uh, so whether you get the championship or not, but maximum points for ourselves um, Perez does end up does end up scoring two points. The strategy for Carlos did not work out to end up with. Pardon me, Jesus. I mean, in terms of the standings, big changes. We overtake Lando Norris in the standings. We are now just three points off the championship lead. I swear to God, at one point this season, we were over 40 points off the championship lead. We're now just three points behind. Lando Norris is now 16 points off the championship lead. He went from one point behind to 16 points behind. Fernando Alonso, big gains for him. He's up into fourth place, tied with Carlos Sainz, but ahead because of that race win. Daniel Ricciardo losing a, a couple places there. Um, as the battle for fourth place rages on. Seriously, that battle for fourth place is so tight. Never mind the battle for the championship. The battle for fourth, man, honestly. But it's now just the top seven still in contention um, for this championship. Alex Albon overtaking Mick Schumacher um, as he scores his second point of the season. But he's behind Lance Stroll because Stroll, um, Stroll's two points was a P9. And um, you can see the, the ever classic line graph returns once again. Um, close as ever as we close right up. See, after Austria, after all, look at the gap we had to the championship lead after Austria. And now we're right behind it. This graph, if anything, demonstrates the consistently inconsistentness of my season. Honestly, man. Um, but in terms of the Constructors' Renault fallouts of contention for the Constructors' Championship, as um, Ferrari pull out a 29-point lead over McLaren after that disastrous weekend for the walking-based outfit. Um, we're 38 points behind McLaren and 67 off the championship lead. Um, Red Bull pulling a little bit away from Mercedes again. Well, no, Mercedes is maybe closing up to Red Bull a little bit more. I don't know, they're 20 points behind. Mercedes are 24 or 20 points behind Red Bull in the battle for fourth. That's all I know. They're going from being a battle for third to there being a battle for fourth. And then we're just comfortable in third, you know? You know, we could start closing up so the car's ahead, but we need A. Checo to be good, which he is. And we, we need him to not get unlucky. I.e. with something or with our strategy team just doing whatever the fuck they did today. I, I have no explanation for the strategy team today. Absolutely none whatsoever. Absolutely none. I'm absolutely speechless at whatever the fuck that was. Because I certainly don't know what that was. I, I have no explanation. Absolutely none. That could have been an easy one to, but it was not. Anyway, we're off to Suzuka next episode for the first time on this game as Sebastian Vettel announces his retirement! We're ending the season, we're ending the episode off with some sh surprising news there. Sebastian Vettel, the next race will be his, the, the Japanese Grand Prix will be his final Japanese Grand Prix. He'll be the only one for a strong result, um, but we'll, that's next time. But for now, thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. If you did, like, share, comment, subscribe, do all those stuff. I'll see you in the next video, bye-bye.